Okay, so in the last lesson, I showed you how to add together two binary numbers, and I just want to re recap that briefly. So, in the event that you have a binary number that you want to add to another binary number, what you need to remember is that if there's only one one in the column, you just can drop down the one because zero and one is one. If there are two ones, what you are effectively doing is you are saying one plus one is two, and the way you write two is one zero. So the way that you write two across two different columns is by carrying the one and bringing down a zero. So it's the same thing as saying one and one is two. And we write two by saying one zero across the two different columns. So when we have three ones in a column, what we're basically saying is one plus one plus one is three. How do you write three? You write it like this. And so the way you're going to do this is you're going to carry a one and drop down a one, which is the same thing as writing three. So that's what I want you to understand as a precursor to how to do subtraction. So now let's start with a very simple problem, which is 8 minus 4. Now we already know the answer needs to be 4, but let's look at how we do this. If we have 0 minus 0, we know the answer is 0. So we can immediately take care of the first two columns, and now we are left with 0 minus 1. But don't think of it as 0 minus 1. Think of it as 2 minus 1. Well, 2 minus 1 is 1. So we just simply write 1 there, and we have our answer, which is 8 minus 4 is 4. Let's look at another, at another example. So here we're going to say 7 minus 6. All right, so what do we what do we do? We have 1 minus 0 is 1. Then we have 1 minus 1 is 0. 1 minus 1 is 0 and 0 minus 0 is 0. And it's it's very simple. And of course 7 minus 6 is 1. So you see how that works. It's very easy if you have 0 minus 0, or 1 minus 0, or 1 minus 1. The only complication is when you have 0 minus 1. And when you have 0 minus 1, you have to look at the columns to the left in order to solve it. Now let me show you another example. So let's say that we have a 0 minus 1, um, and we'll make the problem a little bit more complex. Let's say let's say this, which is 5 minus 3. Now how do we do this? Okay, first of all, 1 minus 1 is 0. Now we look at the 2's column where we have this 0 minus 1, but that doesn't really work for us, so now we have to consider the 4's column also, so we're going to consider this entire space here, and what we're going to say is that um, 2 minus 1 is 1. So we're just going to write 1. And there's our answer. And if you look at it, what we're saying is 5 minus 3 is 2. And what happens if we have a 0 minus 1 where the column immediately over does not contain a 1? Let's take a look at that. So we're going to say that we have a 0 minus 1 where the next column has no 1's and then maybe we have something like this. So this is 8 minus 3. Now how do we do this? Well first of all, 0 minus 1, we really can't do that. So let's look at the next column over. Okay, now we have 0 minus 3, we really can't do that. And so we look at the next column over and we still really can't do that, so we look at the next column over, and now we have 8 minus 3. 
which we could do. We could just simply know what the answer is and write it out. But another way of thinking of this is that we can borrow from one column in order to make uh, the problem different. And the way we do this is we're going to take the 8 away and we're going to make it as if we had two fours in order to make that eight. So what I basically did is I, I said that the eight has now become two fours. That's how you borrow in binary. So now we're going to take one of those fours and we're going to say that it becomes two twos. And now what we can do is we can take one of those twos and make it become two ones. And now we can do the problem. We can basically say two minus one is one. One minus one is zero. One minus zero is one. And we destroyed this, so it's a zero. So we can just simply drop down a zero. Now let's take a look at it. We started with the problem eight minus three. We know that we should get a five, and we see that we do. Now what I just showed you is that you can borrow from any column and when you do that you're going to you're you're basically saying that the column immediately over to the right will have two new ones in it when you destroy the one in the column immediately over to the left let's look at the same example one more time it's very clear so again we're saying 8 minus 3, which we know the answer is going to be 5, and here's how we do that. First of all, the 1 right here, which represents 8 because it's a 1 in the 8's place, well, 8 is the same thing as 4 and 4. So we're going to destroy this 1, and we're going to make that a 0, and then we're going to add two ones into the fours column. And what we've done here is we've said where we used to have a one in the eights column, now we have two ones in the fours column. Now we can take one of those ones, destroy it, and in doing so we're saying that the four is being converted into two twos. The one in the twos column is actually two. So now we have destroyed one of these ones, which is actually a four because it's in the fours column, and now we have two ones in the twos column. We can destroy one of those, and now we have two ones in the ones column, which is the same thing as two. So now you're saying that two minus one is one, 1 minus 1 is 0, and 1 minus 0 is 1, and finally 0 minus 0 is 0. Now, if you can, you don't have to borrow like this. If you can just look at the number and understand what it is in binary, you can look at it in the very beginning and understand that 8 minus 3 is 5 and, and just write out what the answer actually is. But if you need to borrow, and sometimes you do, it's important to understand the method. So let's look at more example here. Let's suppose that we have 16 minus 7. Alright, so here's what we're going to do. 
we're going to borrow from the 16 column and get two eights. We're going to borrow one of the eights and get two fours, borrow one of the fours, get two twos, borrow one of the twos, and get two ones. Okay, and here we go. We can say two minus one is one. Then we say one minus one is zero. One minus one is zero. I'm sorry, that should be Okay, 1 minus 1 is 0, 1 minus 1 is 0, and then 1 minus 0 is 1, and lastly, here we have a 0, because we, we borrowed that 1, so it's just 0 minus 0 is 0, and we can take a look at the final result. 16 minus 7 is 9, 8 and 1 is 9, so you see how it works. Now you only have to borrow from the columns as you need to. You don't always have to borrow all the way over to the place. So let me take, uh, let, let me show you an example like that. Let's say we have 20, which is 16 plus 4, minus, let's say, 6. So if we have 20 minus 6, what we do is we say, okay, 0 minus 0 is 0. 0 minus 1, okay, we can't do that. We need to borrow. So how do we borrow? We take a 4 and we convert it into two twos. And now what we can do is we can say that 4... Let me rewrite that. I meant to use this nice red laser. Four, because we're in the twos column, so two and two is four, and four minus two is two. And we write two by just simply bringing down a one. A one in the twos column is two. So what we just said is four minus two is two. And now we have, in the next column, this is a 0, this is a 1, so we're saying effectively 0 minus 1. We can't do that, we need to borrow. Well, we can't borrow from this column, so now we have to borrow from this column. So, what is this column? Well, we have 1, 2, 4, 8, 16. You have to know what the column is in order to understand how this works. So, in the 16's column, we're borrowing and that means we're going to be able to transform the 16 into two eights. Now we can borrow one of those eights and get two fours. And now we can do it. In this column, we have two fours, which is eight, minus one four, which is four. Eight minus four is four. That's the same thing as if you were saying two minus one is two. So you can see the method here is really simple. When you have two ones minus one one, you get one one. And that's how you do it inside the column. So now we go over to the left and we have one minus zero is one. And then this is all zeros. And now we can go ahead and add it up. We have the ones place, two, four, eight. So we have eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and this is 14, and now we see that 20 minus 6 is 14. That's how you do it. So let me recap the method one more time to make sure that you understand this. Okay, so if we have a subtraction problem that we have to borrow, let's look at one more example so that this becomes crystal clear. So let's look at 17 minus 11. Okay, 
So only borrow where you have to. If it's 1 minus 1, you don't have to borrow. You can just say 1 minus 1 is 0. Now we have to borrow. We have 0 minus 1. Okay. So we can't borrow from here because it's all zeros. We can't borrow from here because you can only borrow from the numbers on the top. This is another 0 minus 1, so we can't borrow from this column. If we try to, if, if we try to get rid of this 1 and then put two ones here, the problem is we still haven't addressed that this is actually 0 minus 1 and so it won't work. You won't get the right answer. We have to borrow from the top row and that means this is the only number we can borrow from. So here's how we do it. We destroy the 16 and we get two eights. Now we destroy one of those eights and we get two fours. We destroy one of those fours and we get two twos and now we can solve the problem. So we say two minus one is one. Then we say one minus zero is one. We say that one minus one is zero and of course zero minus zero is zero. And now we can check it to see if we're right. And we have 17 minus 11 which is of course 6. And you see how this works. So there you go. That is how to subtract two binary numbers. Um, it's not that difficult. I do recommend that you practice it, especially practice it with problems that you know the answer to so you can see how the method so for example, if you have 8 minus 3, you already know the answer is going to be 5. You already know that you write 5 like this. So all you have to do is, is make sure that when you solve the problem, you get your desired results. So we say, okay, 0 minus 1, we can't do. 0 minus 1, we can't do. We have to borrow from here. So we destroy the 8. We get two 4s. We destroy a 4. We get two 2s. We destroy a 2. We get two 1s. Now we say 2 minus 1 is 1. Then we say 1 minus 1 is 0. Then we say 1 minus 0 is 1. And lastly, 0 minus 0 is 0. And there you go. And you see you've got, you've got the right answer. So I hope this helped you out. If you have any questions, feel free to post them below. And always remember that all lessons are published free of charge at HigherComputingForEveryone.com.